Hey guys, in this video I want to do a deep dive comparison between some lenses attached to the X-Pro3 and equivalent lenses with the X100V with the TCL and the WCL adapter lenses. The big question um, on many new X100V users' minds or those considering buying this are uh, is the TCL and the WCL lenses, are they a gimmick or can they work well for semi-pro enthusiast professional photography on the X100V? Today we will answer that question. If you want a deep dive comparison on all the other aspects of shooting between these two cameras, I would encourage you to watch my other video. This one will focus entirely on lenses. Now I've studied these WCL and TCL adapters before on the X100F a while back, but I didn't do a very scientific test for those, more of just a general experience of using and shooting with them and, and if I, was, I thought it was viable to use with the X100V for enthusiast semi-pros or pro photography work. But things have changed with the V now that we have a sharper, um, more optically refined 23F2 lens. Um, I wanted to revisit th these adapters with it, um, but I also just want to compare those to um, equivalent lenses on the X cameras you know, with the X lenses. So the lenses we want to compare are what I have on here now. This is the 18mm f2. That will be compared to the WCL. This is an 18mm, this is a 19mm when it's on the X100V. Um, and then we'll also compare the 35mm f2 to the WCL. Um, this is a 33 millimeter equivalent, this is, or not equivalent, 33 millimeters APS-C, and this is a 35 millimeter APS-C lens. So we'll compare those two for the tele end. And then we'll be using the 2314, which is um, my favorite, one of my favorite lenses on Fuji um, X. The, it's a very, very nice lens. We'll be using that instead of the 23 F2 to compare because I already know that the 23 F2, which is not optically perfect, I mean, it's, it's a great lens, but it's, but it's comparable to the X100F as far as quality, um, sharpness, and whatnot. Um, this 23 F2 on the X100V, I can already tell you, is better than that 23 F2. So I'm, for me personally, I'm more interested in comparing these two, but on a practical standpoint, I own this one, not the 23F2, and I didn't want to go through the trouble to try to procure one. So that's why. So if that bothers you, if you're upset that I'm not testing the 23F2, I do apologize, but I can't test everything. But during the last several weeks, I've shot extensively with the X100V and the adapters, and I've noticed two things. First off, when shooting with the TCL adapter on the camera in various family situations, anecdotally, I felt that it was a sluggish compared to the super snappy responsiveness of the X-Pro3 and the 35mm F2. And contrasting to that, the WCL um, on the, again, X100V obviously, um, felt much better than the sluggish and non-responsive old 18mm F2. But anecdotes aren't enough, so I really wanted to put these through some lab trials to see how they fared. But before we get into the results, I do want to take a second to thank KEH.com who has so graciously sponsored this video. And while they are a sponsor of this channel in many videos, my words are my own when I tell you that I, I love using them. Not only do I appreciate their passion for cameras of all generations, but it's just, it's good business to use them. I send KEH all my used gear, they give me a fair price and make it so painless. I don't even touch auction sites anymore. And when I need to buy used gear, they are also the first place I look. They have consistent scoring methods to score and rate all their gear. They give you a fair price for their gear and they have a healthy 180 day return policy. So if you haven't tried to use them, please do so. And also use the 5% code in the video description so you can save yourself a little bit of money. Thanks KEH. Okay, so the results. I conducted various focusing speed tests and face detection scenarios, partly to refine my process, but partly also just to verify the results. Keep in mind, not all the samples I used were ideal, so this really did test the camera's abilities to acquire faces. But the deeper I got, the more confident I became in my results. When it comes to face acquisition, I feel I can 
fairly confidently say the two clear winners um, with 77% accuracy, again, in less than ideal circumstances, were the 35 millimeter F2 and the 23 millimeter F2 on the X100V. They also just seem to have snappier focus, um, though that is more difficult to measure. A little lower on the rung, we do have the WCL adapter coming in next at a 70% accuracy and the 23 millimeter 1.4 next with 68% accuracy. But they also just seem to focus quickly, almost probably as quickly as the previous two. Again, that's hard to measure, but it seemed um, just as snappy. Then we get to the two laggards of the group. I've never been impressed with the performance of the 18 millimeter F2, that's no secret. It's sluggish and old, not, no surprise here, but the 18 millimeter F2 performed at an unimpressive 54% accuracy, whereas the TCL was slightly better than that, but still not impressive at 57%. These two setups um, also felt the most sluggish when it came to speed of focus acquisition. But then we still need to talk image quality, which most people seem to think is more important than focus accuracy. But in my opinion, if you think that, I would say you're wrong. I lose more photos due to focus inaccuracies than I ever do to lens just not being sharp enough. Just to put things in perspective, consider shots that you love, your favorite shots. Would you rather those shots be um, a little softer because of a lens that was soft or out of focus entirely? So when it comes to image quality, when looking at the two 23 millimeter lenses in normal situations, both of these lenses perform really well. They appear plenty sharp for my needs and I would be very hard pressed to pick a winner just based on real life shooting experiences. And maybe that's the best test and the best reassurance that form factor probably matters more at the end of the day and pixel peeping is not necessary. But to be thorough, let's also do some pixel peeping. When it comes to studying bokeh, I may not be the most qualified as I don't tend to put a lot of value on what is not in focus in a photo, but to me with both lenses at f2, the X100V looks maybe slightly smoother. The bokeh balls at f2 are going to look better on the X100V. It's not a fair comparison because if the 1.4 was shooting wide open, it would definitely win, but we're shooting at f2 here but the bokeh is very similar otherwise. Next, I looked at sharpness of these 23 millimeter lenses, again at f2 and at 200% zoom. We see that both lenses are plenty sharp without any significant difference near the center. At the corners, again at f2, you see some ghosting with that 23.14, but the 100V looks pretty darn good. At 2.8, it looks like the 23 1.4 sharpens up a bit more. At the corners, the 1.4 lens definitely clears up and things look really good for both lenses. Very impressive. At f4, at the corners, the 1.4 continues to clear up even more and does pass up the 100V slightly. Both lenses stay about the same all the way up until f16 where they both start to soften up at the centers and corners, but we do see the X100V soften up a bit more than the 1.4. If forced, I would give the win to the 23-1.4, um, but only by a hair, and I would say both these lenses are extremely impressive and optically on par with some of the best lenses anywhere. Looking next at the 50 millimeter equivalent lenses though, the TCL and the 35 F2. In a studio portrait situation, these lenses appear pretty comparable for all intents and purposes, though I'm pretty sure I'm seeing more micro contrast out of the uh, 35 F2 in both studio and in landscape situations. When it comes to bokeh, the 35 F2 has a slight advantage over the X100V with the TCL in that the TCL won't be a true F2 at F2 and the bokeh certainly does appear much smoother on the 35 F2. However, if you're into bokeh balls, this might be the one redeeming quality of the TCL um, because these are a lot rounder. When we take a closer look into sharpness, we see right away that the 35 F2 is much sharper than the TCL. In the corners, the 35 F2 is not bad, but the TCL doesn't look very good at all. It sort of distorts out into blurriness at the corners. But even more than that, we see extensive pin cushioning distortion happening, which never improves all that much as we move into higher apertures, unfortunately. At f2.8, we do see the TCL start to catch up as far as sharpness at the center, but again, at the corners, we still see the TCL struggle. At f4, we see both lenses sharpen right up at the corners and stay that way until f16, where we do start to really soften up at the middle and the corners. We also lose contrast. But between the softness at the wider end and that horrible pin cushioning, I'd give the win squarely to the 35 f2. But let's look at the wide lenses now, the 18 millimeter 
f2 prime and the wcl adapter in normal landscape situations both lenses appear plenty sharp in one photo i felt the 18 millimeter had more micro contrast than the wcl but i reversed my opinion in the second photo so who knows maybe my eyes are bad or my technique is flawed either way they are close and that's good news for anyone thinking about the wcl when it comes to quality of bokeh i would have expected a similar trend as we saw between the 35 f2 and the tcl and that the 18 f2 prime would look better but that is not the case clearly the wcl on that really amazing x100v is smoother and that also carries over to the bokeh balls where the 18 millimeter f2 creates some very nervous looking bokeh balls when it comes to sharpness at the center we see okay sharpness and a lack of contrast in both lenses so not the best we've seen so far but not too bad and the corners are a bit softer but very similar against each other at f2.8 though the 18 f2 clearly takes the lead in the center but at the corners the wcl actually looks slightly better at f4 things look really good and i cannot tell the difference but after f8 interestingly it seems to me that the diffraction sets in earlier for the 18 millimeter f2 it appears softer than the wcl until f16 so for these two lenses i'd say it's probably a draw when it comes to image quality both not being the most amazing in the world but but fine for all practical purposes next let's briefly look at color the observant youtube watcher will have noticed some differences in tonalities in the pairs of photos i was sharing with you and after diving a little deeper we do find some extremely subtle differences for the most part the subtleties are subtle enough not to warrant a substantial substitution for suitable situations I know that made no sense, but I, I had to keep that alliteration going. Um, but where you do see the biggest differences, um, they're in the red tone. The red tones in the X100V appear to be slightly cooler generally with lower luminosity. And while this is interesting, I don't think it should factor into a buying decision. But probably what is a bigger deal, and certainly it's a bigger deal to me, is the question of close focus ability. I really love the X100V for how close it can focus, or I guess more accurately for its reproduction ratio. Getting close doesn't matter if you have a tele lens what matters is how large the subject can be vis-a-vis -vis the sensor and here we see that silver dollar which is close in size to that sensor gets the best reproduction ratio with the wcl lens attached to the x100v that is very exciting news to me as to reveal my hand a little bit i really love using that wcl on the x100v of course the x100v performs just fine on its own in the close focus department but takes a hit when it's armed with that tcl telephoto adapter the fuji primes we tested here didn't fare as well as the x100v with a 23 three one four performing the worst okay that was a lot of pixel peeping and my brain now hurts but um, i think it was important to really dive in here and figure out um, how these things perform um, if we didn't do that you know we'd never really be able to answer the question are they good enough so to answer that question are these two adapters just a gimmick and not for serious photographers the answer is it depends on your tolerance for performance and image quality for me the tcl did not meet my standards for more professional um, work or work i care about high image quality for if it's more shooting around hobbyist personal projects lomography-esque type work then the TCL, I'm sure, can work great, and I, I wouldn't hesitate using it in those settings. But the WCL on the X100V is much more accurate, focuses faster, and it can match the sharpness of the 18F2. From this, I would conclude that if you want to buy the X100V, but also are worried about the times you where you mean, may need a little bit wider reach, um, go ahead and get the WCL adapter and have confidence that it will perform well for you, even in pro settings. The other thing I would say is if you do want to buy either of these, um, there is a version one and a version two. I would consider actually getting version one because optically they're identical. The only difference between version one and version two of these lenses is that when you attach version two, um, the camera will, will identify that it's attached and put that in the EXIF data, whereas version one won't. But you can save a lot of money if you're willing to get that, um, that version one, especially if you get them from KH, so something to consider. But that is my answer, I hope it helps you. If you're new to photography, please check out my live workshops that will be starting soon. It's a great way to learn your camera and the basics of photography all at the same time in a live, online, interactive environment. So check that out um, below in the description. And in the meantime, guys, remember to do good with your cameras and we will talk to you again real soon.